Where in the world did you go? Why haven't you texted me all this time? My wife ignored me and began packing her suitcase. Hey, why are you packing your suitcase? I tried to grab her hand, but she slapped me away. Stop, I'm leaving. Why? We're getting divorced. B what What do you mean? My name is Tristan. I'm a 27-year-old businessman. I married my wife Jenny two years ago. We met on a dating app and began dating because we shared many hobbies. We both like music and comic books, so we never ran out of things to talk about, and we got married naturally. We didn't have any problems. We lived a happy married life. Today is my wife's birthday. Our wedding anniversary is also the day after tomorrow, so I've been planning a big celebration for some time. I work Saturdays and Sundays, so my wife and I's days off usually didn't line up. Jenny works for a famous company, so she has to go on work dinners and often is stuck working overtime. All in all, it was hard to make time to be together. With that in mind, we even had our wedding on a weekday with only very close family and friends, so if we didn't plan our anniversary in advance, it would be hard for us to actually celebrate together. Last year, we didn't even get to celebrate because we were both busy with work, so this time, I requested paid time off in advance. I also reminded Jenny to do her best to come home early from work. She seemed happy, and as she headed off for work, said she'd do her best to get home early. I quickly began cleaning the house, and by mid-morning, I had finished. I went to the store and bought wine and a cake that I knew Jenny would like. I also bought some appetizers that looked tasty. At the spur of the moment, I also bought expensive steaks to cook as a main course. I set the table and waited for my wife to come home so I could start cooking the steaks. Feeling buzzed, I texted Jenny when I expected she'd be off work. Ten minutes passed, then twenty minutes, and there was no reply. Maybe she can't hear her phone because it's in her purse. Thirty minutes later, there was still no reply. It usually takes around 30 minutes for her to get home from work. After about an hour, she finally replied, I'm sorry, I'm stuck at work. I felt sad, but since it was work, I couldn't do anything about it. I replied, When do you think you'll make it home? Even if she was stuck working overtime, I hope we could at least eat dinner together, but her response was, There was an emergency, so I won't be able to go home tonight. I'll probably have to sleep at the office. Don't worry about cooking me dinner. I was shocked. There was nothing I could do about it, though. But what was with how she wrote her message? Did she completely forget what day it is? We've been talking about celebrating for some time now, and I reminded her this morning, so she should remember. I realized there was a huge gap between us. We lived together, but our hearts were very far apart from each other. That's how I began to feel. Something bothered me about what Jenny had said. Her work's busy season ended last month, so she should be more free now. Last month, Jenny was super busy, and I remember how to keep herself going, she'd say, Every day is so hard on me, but if I can just get past this month. She would say that often when she was at home. Well, she said it was an emergency, so I guess she couldn't have predicted it. Even if I blamed her, there was nothing I could do about it. I forced myself to accept the situation, and ate the food that was spoiled by tomorrow. I put the steaks in the freezer, and thought to myself that I would eat them with Jenny tomorrow, or the day after. But when I got home the next day... Jenny wasn't there. She didn't read her texts and didn't answer her calls. I felt a bit worried. What could Jenny be doing? The next morning, I called Jenny's office. I told them that Jenny hadn't come home from work, and they told me something shocking. They told me Jenny had quit her job the day before. I couldn't believe my ears. She had quit? I couldn't understand what they were saying. Of course, her job couldn't tell me more than that. Shocked and wanting to find out. If something had happened to Jenny, I took the day off work. First off, it was out of the ordinary that Jenny wasn't picking up her phone. Something bad probably happened to her. I decided to call her family's house. Right as I was dialing the number, I heard the front door unlock. Tristan, why are you here? Aren't you supposed to be at work? Jenny hadn't gotten into any trouble. If anything, she acted like running into me was trouble. Where in the world did you go? Why haven't you texted me all this time? Looking annoyed, Jenny entered the room. Come on, answer me. My wife ignored me and began packing her suitcase. Hey, why are you packing your suitcase? I tried to grab her hand, but she slapped me away. Stop, I'm leaving. Why? We're getting divorced. What? What? What are you saying out of nowhere? It's not out of nowhere. I've been thinking about this for a while. Anyway, when are you going to change jobs? Huh? I don't plan on changing jobs. See, that's why we don't match. What? Didn't we talk about this when we got married? Even if I don't make much money, you told me to work a job I enjoy. I just said that to be nice. A real man should want to work a better paying job for the sake of his wife. 
I don't get what you mean. And on top of that, you don't help out much around the house when you're off work. I do a lot around the house. Yeah, yeah, it's all my fault. It'll all be okay if you blame it on someone else. But what's with the way you're talking? Anyway, I can't be married to you anymore. I want us to divorce no matter what. I wasn't that much of an idiot to keep arguing with her. Fine, I don't need you in my life anymore either. Perfect. I'll leave this on the table, so fill it out soon. Jenny pulled out divorce papers. She was that prepared? I filled out my sections quickly and handed the papers to Jenny. I hope you're sad without me. Me? Sad? I'm feeling refreshed. Jenny left the house with a smile. I was so angry I wanted to pick up and throw everything around me. Afterwards, I quickly packed my own things and went to my parents' house. My parents were surprised when I first arrived, but when they heard that happened, they became outraged. My parents wanted to go immediately to my in-law's house to get an explanation for this, but since I didn't know whether Jenny would be there or not, I told them not to go. I ended up staying over at my parents for a while as I looked for a new apartment. Around a week after I had left our house, Jenny suddenly texted me. What she sent surprised me. She had sent wedding photos of her getting married to another man. Seeing that I had read the text, Jenny called me. Hello, did you see the messages? I did. What's this? You got remarried a week after divorcing me? Well, yeah. You're the worst, so you cheated on me. He's someone I've had a relationship with since you and I got married. She admitted to it herself. I couldn't afford to pay you alimony or anything. My new husband's house, it's the house of a CEO, so it's huge. He's really rich. Jenny told me she wanted to marry a CEO. My father-in-law has cancer and he'll probably pass away soon, so soon my husband will be CEO. I feel like this is my Cinderella story. She said she met her new husband at a restaurant she visited for a business dinner. He approached her first, and since Jenny had a weakness for handsome men, she fell for him instantly. They began dating secretly, and Jenny threw me away in order to be with him. As Jenny was showing off to me, I noticed something. She mentioned that her husband's father's company was in Chicago, and the man in the photo looked familiar. Who was he? It was right at the tip of my tongue. Chicago. That's my hometown. So, you're nearby now? Uh, probably, but I won't meet you or anything. I never said I wanted to meet you. What's your husband's name? I might know him. What? There's no way someone like you would have a friend that handsome. Whatever. Just tell me. Keenan Yates. Huh? Is he the same age as me? Yeah, do you know him? <laughs> what? Why are you suddenly laughing? That guy was my classmate in high school. Hmm, really? What a surprise. Yeah, really a surprise. If to think you would marry Keenan. I don't believe you. Not that it matters. I'm going to be even happier than I was with you. Even if you can't accept it, I don't care. I hope you're happy. Why are you talking like that? You're so weird. I was bored of talking with her, so I hung up the phone. Two months later, my ex-wife called me again. What is it this time? Hey, did you laugh because you knew Keenan had plastic surgery? You finally realized. Yeah, it seems he got work done on his whole body when he was in college. Apart from that, he was pretty famous for having a bad personality. Thinking you married a guy like that, I couldn't help but laugh. Why didn't you tell me? Well, we're divorced. I had no obligation to tell you. How did you find out? Since I knew you two used to be classmates, I thought I'd look at his high school yearbook. He said he was embarrassed, so he didn't want to show me. I just thought he was being shy. So when we went to his parents' house one day, I secretly entered his room and found the yearbook. And I saw those photos of him before plastic surgery. He tricked me. I'm pregnant now, and the baby I give birth to will probably look like the face I saw in your high school yearbook. What a joke. What are you saying? You two suit each other perfectly. I know that you've also had plastic surgery done. How do you know that? Your parents told me before we got married. They asked me if I was okay with it. At the time, I thought you were a good-hearted person, so I told them I didn't care. But to think you were rotten on the inside as well? Not that I'm that great looking, but it's ironic how you two fakes got together. No matter who your baby looks like, well, a parent shouldn't care what their child looks like on the outside. More importantly, did you sort everything out with our apartment? Huh? Our apartment? The apartment we used to live in. Aren't you living there now? What are you saying? I moved a while back. The last time you called me, I was at my parents' house. That's why I asked if you were nearby. Huh? What about the furniture and appliances? You lived there before we got married and I moved in, so all that stuff is yours. That's why it's your job to clear it all out. The apartment is under your name as well. Hasn't the landlady chased after you to pay the last two months' rent? Wh what? 
Well, good luck. I hung up the phone and blocked Jenny's number. It seems that this was just the beginning for my miserable ex-wife. The baby Jenny gave birth to didn't look like her or Keenan, so I heard that their relationship became rocky. Keenan's father passed away, and though it seemed like Keenan was going to inherit his father's company, it ends up that the company was on the verge of bankruptcy, so Jenny and Keenan just ended up taking on a lot of debt. In order to pay off those debts, Jenny began working every day as a hostess at a bar. Paying off debts and raising a child, Jenny seems to be living a rough life. It's a shame that things went so far, but this is what she deserves for cheating on me. I have found myself an apartment near my work, and I'm living a peaceful and comfortable life. I'll be taking a break from romance for now, and I'll be putting my all into growing in my career. Thank you for watching. Did you enjoy today's story? If you did, please subscribe to our channel. See you next time.